What's going on YouTube? I want to make a quick video about um, how I was able to get this A2 front sight post um, on an AR. I'm uh, working on a new upper build in 5.56 for my SBR. It's a 10.5 inch barrel and I really wanted an A2 front sight on it. I just wanted to keep it simple and uh, sturdy and reliable and so I, I bought this takeoff. Somebody had taken off their rifle and I talked myself into, after watching videos, going ahead and trying to uh, drill the holes for the pins. And I even bought some taper pins. And once I kind of sat down to do it, I talked myself out of it. Um, mainly because of the investment of the tools. I did see me eat a few things, like a nice drill press uh, being probably the primary thing um, in order to be able to properly uh, get those taper pins and the other thing you'd need is a tapered uh, reamer, a number two reamer and um, they're not necessarily cheap. I was looking at you know minimum hundred dollar investment depending how cheap I was going to go on the drill press and I saw a video uh, where a guy just uh, drilled his own, drilled and tapped for his own set screws and uh, I've done quite a few uh, you know maybe build seven uppers uh, using low pro uh, gas blocks and set screws so I had some left over and I looked at them and I measured them and they were actually uh, 1032 threads. And then I had this old tap and die set that I would bought 10 years ago in my shed that uh, happened to have a 1032 uh, tap in there. Um, and so I thought, well, let me give this uh, option a try. In my experience, those set screws when going from the bottom up um, are really good. They do sell some like this where there's four set screws, one here, here, and then on the opposing sides, there's four and those have not gotten good reviews. Those kind of push in on the bottom end of the barrel and don't really grasp on it. Um, but in my experience with low pro gas blocks, those set screws uh, are rock solid, especially when you dimple uh, the bottom of the barrel. Um, so one thing I did is I removed this, uh, this sling loop that was in the bottom. Uh, it's, a lot of these front sights don't have the sling loop, so if you don't, uh, you don't need to do that, but I just drilled it out. It's uh, uh, pretty lightweight. It is steel, um, but I just drilled it out and it popped right off. Um, but underneath that, you'll see there's already a hole there, and that hole is what the manufacturer uses to um, drill out the gas port. So this goes, uh, that's how they can access uh, to drill into the gas port. So that hole is uh, bigger than an eighth. So uh, 832 wouldn't work. Um, and again, uh, I think 832, 8-32, and 10-32 are two pretty common thread sizes for these types of set screws for gas blocks. So um, I went to Home Depot, I went online and looked at my options and I found this kit from DeWalt. It's $5.77 at Home Depot. It's the includes the number 21 uh, drill bit that you need uh, to start it and then the tap. I already had the tap, but there's an extra one. Five dollars and seventy-seven cents. And for ninety cents, I got these longer set screws that are uh, ten thirty-two, but half an inch long, stainless steel for a two-pack. And that's for this uh, beefier part here, where the bayonet lug goes. It's just over half an inch thick here, whereas it's only about three sixteenths or three eighths of an inch thick, uh, where this hole is already there. So I'm just going to tap this first and and, uh, and try to then dimple and install it um, before I go trying to cut through this thicker one. Alright, so now I've got my number 21 drill bit on here, which is just barely bigger than the hole that's already there. So uh, this should hopefully be fairly easy to drill out. There it is. That was it. And I did put a little piece of tape, which I think I've ripped up, uh, just over the gas port to try to keep uh, some of the debris from out of that gas port. All right, now that I've uh, done that really hard drilling job uh, with my number 21 drill bit, I have my 1032 tap here on my handlebar, and I'm just going to start. So I put the camera down so I could use two hands to start this off, but this is really simple. I just kind of go back and forth, go deep a little bit, and then kind of back out a little bit just to uh, 
you basically cut and then you back out to let the shavings pop out. And I've got a little tiny pile of, of uh, metal shavings falling down here. All right, so that literally took me less than five minutes, significantly less than five minutes, including the drilling and the tapping. And now I've got a set screw in there. Um, feels nice and snug in there. Um, now I'm gonna actually put it on the upper uh, and try to align it, uh, make sure it's uh, it's level with the uh, the receiver. And then I'm going to mark where I'm gonna uh, drill a small dimple on the underside of the barrel where the set screw is going to be pushing against. So now I've got my upper and my uh, vice block upside down. Uh, one thing to not forget if you are going to be using an A2 handguard, you definitely want to put this plate in before you start marking where you're going to align your gas block, otherwise you're going to be off and you're going to be uh, very unhappy. Uh, but um, so I put it in here upside down and the reason I do it upside down is because I, I've tried various methods for aligning a gas block including using uh, this little tool from HB Industries you can get on eBay for uh, about uh, 10 bucks I believe with free shipping uh, but the way that I found but even with that alignment block which is great even once you get that little alignment tool in the gas port there's still a good amount of wiggle so the way that I found to get the most accurate level is, is to use a, a, an iPhone app called Handy Level it's free um, and it's just a level, but it gives you pretty precise measurements, and you can have the ability to zero it, zero the level on different surfaces. So, in this case, I'm going to zero, put the level here, my iPhone here, uh, zero it there, get it down here, make sure it's still zeroed, and then put it on this on my um, bayonet lug, which is a pretty uh, tight sp surface, but it's enough for me to get my iPhone nice and flat on there, and uh, and true and get that perfectly level with the surface back here on my receiver where my rear side is going to go. So I've aligned my two surfaces here. I've got my bayonet lug surface aligned to my receiver uh, by less than one tenth, within one less than one tenth of one degree and I crank down on these set screws which the set screws that I happen to have left over are actually marking set screws. They're not meant for permanent installation. They have little serrated ridge uh, that is meant to mark where you're going to drill your dimple and that's all they're supposed to be used for. But I'm going to be using one uh, to permanently install um, right there. Alright, so here's my dimple. You can kind of see where I let the Dremel uh, get away from me at one point, which is easy to do. You want to be careful to not do, but it's not particularly deep, but uh, just enough to uh, keep the set screw in one place without uh, letting it wiggle around. Okay, now I'm getting ready to drill my second uh, hole through the uh, half inch thick. It's a little over a half inch thick at the uh, bayonet lug. Uh, one thing I learned from the first hole is that my hole wasn't entirely straight vertically up and down even though I was just uh, uh, basically w slightly enlarging an existing hole that was made there at the factory. But this time, I uh, put my barrel in here, my barrel assembly, my upper assembly, made sure that this is level. And now I'm using this different drill, which has a, a simple little level device in the top that just helped me try to stay straight. Um, hoping to make a straighter hole uh, on this second one. Okay, the second hole came out not perfectly straight, but mostly straight. Um, I don't foresee having a problem with it. Well, there it is. They're finished. Um, they're Loctite. They're not perfect, but they're solid completely. That isn't going anywhere. I did check it with my laser bore sight, and I put the, the center of the rear sight, the windage, right in the dead middle, and the dot was right dead center at about 25 yards. So I'm confident I'll be able to sight it in no problem. Again, for seven bucks or less, um, I thought it was a fairly easy uh, do-it-yourself job. Way easier than trying to uh, drill for uh, taper pins and pound them in, uh, and definitely a lot quicker. Um, I think if you've got it all set up and aren't trying to videotape, you should be able to do it in less than uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Thanks for watching.